Dr. Frank Richter, the man behind Harass's Global Leaders event. What we would like to achieve at Harass's is to inspire the future, to shape the future, to reposition globalization. We are focusing on emerging countries. Yes. And not only on the G20 countries, but on smaller players. This multi-stakeholder dialogue is important where business, government and civil society can collaborate. The selection criteria is really to um, look for interesting people, people who created their own business, maybe even with a social impact dimension. What are some of the more maybe longer term plans that you see Harasses um, effectuating? Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Happiness Amplified. I'm Steve Melnick and I'm pleased to have as my guest today, Dr. Frank Richter, who is the man behind this amazing event, Harass's Global Leaders event. Frank, first of all, thank you so much thanks for so taking much, time. Thanks so much, Stephen. Thanks so much for joining us. Absolute pleasure. A lot of things are happening, but thank you for creating some time for us to speak. There are so many reasons why I'm just absolutely fascinated about what you do here. Well, first of all, in terms of the magnitude, I mean, you have world leaders here, presidents of countries, ministers of foreign affairs. How do you make it happen? You know, it's... Um a joint effort and our delegates are the stars. We had um, 800 participants from business, two head of states, around 15 ministers, a lot of media, academicians and government officials and uh, they're all helping, they all come here to jointly shape the future. What we would like to achieve at Ferrasis is to inspire the future, to shape the future, to reposition globalization. Many of our participants are regulars that come every year. I would say uh, for us, it's like a big, big family. It's a community. Everyone wants to come and learn, but also to contribute and to, to jointly try to um, achieve a better world. What I've noticed, and one of the major differentiating factors that I see is this is not simply gathering of leaders, of thoughts, of countries, of businesses, major businesses, but it's a place where amazing ideas and visions get generated. And I, in every panel I go to, I see people taking notes. I mean, usually people come to the events, you know, it's great networking, may, meet great people, maybe potential opportunities, but all these new ideas and as these great minds interact, it, it just creates another level of reality. And this is really what's shaping the future. And what I wanted to say is the way you created all these panels, industries that have nothing to do with each other, and yet, you, the way you're positioning and, and you're directing conversation, how do you make it happen? Well, the intellectual backbone is the most important uh, success factor and the basis for everything. So we spend a lot of time to write a program. I do it myself um, over the whole year. Uh, next year's program is already written. The topic, the theme, the overarching theme will be leadership or the lack of leadership and how we can achieve a better leadership. And all these sessions will be linked to this uh, overarching theme leadership. But we spend a lot of time talking to our participants and um, getting the feedback saying what is important, what do people like to hear, and um, what are the new topics like you know the, the innovation, the future. This year, for example, we got a session on the ocean for the very first time. And we got two ministers speaking about um, how we can protect the ocean. And uh, we had also business leaders um, jumping in on that. So we try to be uh, innovative, uh, we want to be really the frontier of new thinking. Horasis is really a laboratory of ideas and it's a, a joint experience. Uh, everybody is contributing and maybe sometimes it's the wisdom of the crowd mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. comes together. And speaking of wisdom of the crowd, also what I and everybody that I spoke with here very much appreciated is that when you normally uh, attend a panel, whether you're on a panel or participate, uh, there are basically people who are in the industry that have you know, good grasp of sub subject matter that are practically talking about similar things. Yet the way you design each panel, each engagement, while there are synergies and similarities, people come from very different backgrounds, but with the same interest, same cause. And I think that what facilitates tremendously the creation of that next wave of ideas, of plans, and ultimately, once again, that's what shapes the future. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, the selection criteria is really to um, look for interesting people, people with a profile, people who achieve something in their life. We are not just looking into people who um, 
went to Harvard, uh, worked for Goldman Sachs and others, but uh, people who created their own business, maybe even with a social impact dimension. And we have amazing people here, I have to say. Just now at the last plenary, we got an activist from Zimbabwe, and um, mm -hmm. she was behind the whole freedom movement um, of um, creating um, a new governance model and to see what is happening after Mugabe. Uh, we got also a freedom fighter from West Papua. We have um, people who are um, uh, reinventing blockchain technologies and see how we can use blockchain for mm -hmm. social cohesion. So it's really a laboratory of ideas and uh, right now the closing plenary is going on where we would like to crystallize the ideas uh, coming up during the summit eventually to create a, a new sort of uh, global collaboration. What we feel in times of populism, nepotism and nationalism is that uh, global institutions in Washington DC, in New York, the UN, in Geneva lose importance and we believe that multilateralism is so important. Maybe Horasis could fill this void to say that the traditional institutions can't really achieve the goal anymore. We need more private sector, we need uh, the innovators and we would really like to um, rebuild this world to make it a better world. Beautiful. And I could tell you on a practical level, for example, the conversation that uh, President, former president of Sierra Leone, the two-term president, that we had in terms of how Africa is managing and how a path for different regions to find ways to better deal with each other and some of the best practices. There was a follow-up conversation immediately after with the same issues in the Caspian region and how you know the ideas are shared and how to implement and this is what's shaping the future of the world which is amazing absolutely and we also look for like new region like the caspian region it's not a region you know a lot talked about so far and you would like to highlight those regions uh, the president of namibia came with uh, five ministers uh, a delegation of 50 in total and um, he engaged with us all the time. He talked about investment into the country. And uh, we were very glad to highlight countries like Namibia or the Caspian region. Already now I'm thinking of um, which countries to invite next year. Beautiful. And we got a few um, commitments already from head of states. So uh, we, are, we are growing. Uh, we try to engage a broader audience. And uh, we would like to think that this multi-stakeholder dialogue is important where business government and civil society can collaborate. I know we have a planner coming up, so last question. I know a man like you always has a vision and always has plans. You said that you already drafted the agenda for the next event, but what are some of the more maybe longer term plans that you see harasses um, uh, effectuating? Right, on the short term we would like to add one more meeting, uh, Horasis Africa meeting. It's in the making. We already host a meeting on India, China and Southeast Asia and Africa is missing. Eventually also Latin America. Those are the two editions. You can really see, Stephen, that we are focusing on emerging countries. Yes. And not only on the G20 countries, but on smaller players. Mm -hmm. That's uh, one thing. On the long term, we would like to um, achieve a level of engagement where we can move from dialogue, engagement to real impacts. You mentioned the president of Sierra Leone and um, he's about to launch a major initiative um, of funding growth and security in Africa and Horasis will be a driving force behind it. We would like to support those initiatives to say that we at Horasis can not only generate ideas but we can realize ideas. Brilliant and certainly emerging markets if you look at the history of the world during the past hundred years um, you know, becoming the, the main markets ultimately over time, looking at India, looking at China, and looking, you know, and many other regions. So certainly being there where there is a need for this help and helping those regions, I think it's just a phenomenal contribution that you're making to the world in general. And for that, I wanted to thank you very much and for just creating this beautiful platform for people to come, share ideas, and share the world and shape the future. Thank you Thanks again so much. Thanks so much, really appreciate it. Thanks so much. And this was another episode of Happiness Amplified. And again, I'm honored and thrilled to have Mr. Dr. Frank Richter to be as my guest. Till next time, take care. Let me know what you think of this in the comment section below. Leave questions for my guests for the follow-up interviews. And as always, please like, subscribe, and share.